Restoring nasal breathing in the vast majority of people and children, it's very easy to do. A child breathes through the mouth or an adult breathes through the mouth generally for one reason. They breathe through their mouth if they feel air hunger while breathing through the nose. What causes air hunger? Air hunger can be caused either by rhinitis that the nose is stuffy or it could be allergic rhinitis that the child or adult has hay fever or for instance they could have a head cold or they could have a mechanical obstruction to the nose or you could have a child for example with a large adenoids that the back of the nose is obstructed or quite simply the child or adult could have developed a poor breathing pattern that their respiratory rate is quite fast and that they're breathing in excess of what they should be over breathing and if you're over breathing and if you're trying to breathe through your nose you may feel air hunger because the amount of air that one is breathing is too high. So really what we want to do is to restore nasal breathing, both in children and adults, is to decongest the nose first. It's very, very easy. Don't do this exercise if the female is pregnant, if you've got cardiovascular issues, or if you've got serious ill health. However, it's just involving holding of the breath. To decongest the nose, you can take a small breath into your nose, a small breath out through your nose, you pinch your nose with your fingers and walk around while you hold your breath. If you hold your breath on an exhalation and walk around and you continue walking and holding your breath until you feel say a medium to strong air hunger, then let go and breathe in through your nose, rest a minute with normal breathing and repeat it again and repeat it five times, your nose will have opened up. That's how we restore nasal breathing. We first have to determine can we remove the obstruction? Can we help to decongest the nose? And yes, we, we can. Um, very understudied field. You know, this has been written about since 1923 in that breath holding in man resulted in re reduction of nasal obstruction. So we know that when, when human beings, when we do breath holding or when we do physical exercise with the mouth closed, it's going to increase a gas called carbon dioxide in the blood and it may be the increase of CO2 in the blood that helps to open up the nose. But also when we do breath holding, we're holding our breath and at the same time nitric oxide is continuously released into the nasal cavity and it may be that nitric oxide could be playing some role. Another aspect may be that when we hold our breath we're activating the body's sympathetic response or stress response and that may be helping to open up the nose. So anybody with nasal obstruction, in the vast majority of cases, we can help you open up your nose and restore nasal breathing on a permanent basis. Try that simple exercise, I repeat it, your nose should be opening up. That will temporarily decongest your nose. Your nose will be more permanently free when your BOLT score, which is the body oxygen level test, reaches about 25 seconds. So if somebody comes in to me with nasal uh, congestion, I would say to them, listen, I can give you an exercise which will, you know, we're pretty much guaranteed this will help, will help open up your nose if you've got hay fever, if you've got perennial rhinitis, if you've just got nasal congestion, nasal stuffiness, runny nose, we can help it. However, you'll get a much more permanent result when you switch to nose breathing on a permanent basis when you practice the various breathing exercises that we teach, and when your bowl score increases, your nose is much less likely to get congested. This is without antihistamines. This is without nasal steroids. This is without any medication to help open up the nose. That simply by changing your breathing patterns, you can open up your nose. Try it.